of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come and receive grain and eat. Come without pain, without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, for your wages that fail to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, and you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate towards all his works. The Lord, the hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The eyes of all look hopefully to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is just in all his works and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him to all who call upon him in truth. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine? or nakedness, or peril, or the sword. 
No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loves us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor participalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat and to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, this is a deserted place and it is already late. Dismiss the crowds so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, there is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, 12 wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about 5,000 men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's gospel, we, we hear of the very famous story of the multiplication of the loaves and the fish. Uh, this, this is one of the ones I remember most as a child, um, as it, it's always in the um, like picture Bibles and things like that. And there's many different points in this gospel that, that we can take. But today I want to focus on the theme of trusting in God. Because when we trust in God, 100% of the time, God will provide, even in ways we might not expect. And when we do this, when we trust in God, then he will also give us plenty. In the, which is over there now, but, uh, but I read it a few times. In the gospel, the disciples, Jesus was preaching, and so many people gathered. It said 5,000 men, not including women and children. So it could have been 10,000 people, maybe even more. And so he was preaching to them. Large gathering wanted to hear him because it was Jesus. And at the end of the day was coming. And they had no food, but dinner time was coming. 
And so the disciples said to Jesus, Lord, you know, you should send them home so they can go to their families, they can go eat, you know, take care of that. Because we don't have, we don't have what it takes to feed all of these people. And so Jesus said, no, we're going to feed them. And of course, the disciples, they were confused because, and then they said, we only have five loaves and two fishes. What are you talking about? So the, the disciples here, they, of course, they didn't expect that they could feed with five loaves and two fishes, this 5,000 plus people, maybe even 10,000. But they still trusted in God and they still said, okay, we'll follow your directions. And they brought him the five loaves and the two fish. And of course, then Jesus performed the miracle and ended up feeding all of these people. And so that's something that we are also called to do, to trust in the, in the Lord, even in times where it seems like nothing can be done. And so what we must do is trust in God, but we have to also put forth our effort. The disciples still did some of the work. They still did their part. For example, the disciples still had to find five loaves and two fishes. Um, in other versions of this gospel story, it's in all four gospels, um, you know, they, they had somebody bring up the five loaves and two fishes. They went looking. And after Jesus performed the miracle, it wasn't the end of it. But then the disciples followed Jesus' commands and they went and they gave the food to everybody. They distributed it. So they still were doing their part. They still were doing some, some of the work themselves. Of course, Christ did almost all of it, but the disciples still had a hand in this, in doing their part. And so that's something that we are all called to do. So many times in our lives, situations come where we think it's all bad, nothing good can come, or it's all over. But if we trust in God, he will give us what we need. It might not be what we expect or what we think we need, but he's going to give us what we need. And in this gospel, at the end, it says that Jesus made the food for the people, the 5,000 people, but also he made more than enough. He made, he made an overabundance. It said that they ended up with 12 wicker baskets extra of food that was left over. And so God didn't just provide what they needed. He gave them even more. And that's what God does for us. When we trust in him and we do our part, even no matter how small it may seem, God will give us even more than an abundance of graces or blessings in our lives. One... Um, moment uh, from my own life is that when I first entered the seminary, I, I didn't know what exactly I was getting myself into, and nobody does. It's like marriage. You don't know until you're in it. Uh, I knew that God was, was I, think I, I had a strong feeling God was calling me, but I didn't know what it was going to look like. And so I entered the seminary, and, and on ordination day, I was still in the seminary, or I guess I was out because I graduated. Um, but I remember this one priest shared this story um, of this prayer he made during his ordination mass. So I made the same prayer because I thought of that in that moment. Uh, and there's this moment, uh, if you've ever seen an ordination or been to one, where uh, all the people about to get ordained are laying flat on the ground, kind of like on Good Friday. Uh, and they're praying for all the saints to intercede, praying, asking them all to pray for the people that are about to be ordained. And in that moment, uh, I remember I kind of talking with God. And I said, like, Lord, you know, I can only give you this much. This much right here. Uh, and that's all I can do. That's my best. Um, but I'll give you that. But I know you're calling me to be a priest for you. So I need you to cover the rest. Um, and that was my own way of, of doing my best to trust in God and still giving him what I could of myself. And trusting that God can provide the rest. I think it's worked out so far. Um, but that's from my little own uh, life experience. And so going back to the gospel, that's what God is asking us all to do. To trust fully in him. Even when things seem not possible. Like in the gospel. It didn't seem possible to feed all these people. But the disciples, and they said, you know, how can we do this? But they trusted in Christ they followed his commands, and they still did their part. They still distributed the, the food after. They still 
scrounged up the five loaves and the two fish, and Christ did all the rest. And so, as we reflect on this gospel, we remember that God will always provide. He will always give us what is best for us. He will always give us what we need. And all we need to do is to do our part and to trust in Him. Let us stand to now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Mindful of God's promise that we will delight in rich fare, we present our prayers with a trust in God's faithfulness. For church leaders, stewards of our faith, that they live in a way that will draw all believers to know Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world's government authorities, that they work together for global healing and peace, we pray to the Lord. For those whose jobs are affected by the coronavirus, that they do not fall into depression but come out of this difficult time, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the world, that as Jesus sees our suffering from the COVID-19, his heart is moved with pity and he enables a cure to be found, we pray to the Lord. For our parish community, that we can be the light that is St. Peter Claver Church in the domestic church of our homes, experiencing Jesus' presence there. We pray to the Lord. For those who are sick and all in need of healing, especially Irvin Walker, Jimmy Upcamp, and Jeremy Sweeney, that they receive grace and strength, we pray to the Lord. For those who have gone before us and await the kingdom, especially Mary Lou Kozup, Joe Sh Schickerhart, Socrates Inanag, Hilda Corson, Bill Waters, Mary Flores, Bad Yamal Delphin, and Dee Hibbs, that they find rest from their labors and peace in the loving embrace of the Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, we lovingly thank you for the everlasting covenant. We bring our prayers in the name of Jesus, our hope, and our peace. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting this oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of the times and seasons. You form man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. 
together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, who blesses Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Let the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. For communion, uh, we ask just a few things. Uh, we ask that you please keep your mask on. Uh, even as you come up, please keep your mask on. Uh, we ask that you extend your hands fully as you come up. Uh, and, and, ask, and when you do receive communion after, uh, we ask that you don't close your hands right away, but instead you turn in your, whatever direction, depending on which side you're on, and take a few steps, then you may take off your mask, consume the Eucharist, and we ask that then after you put your mask on and please return back to your seats. As we come up for communion, there are two stations, one right here and one right here. Um, and we just ask that, we'll start from the front, but as you come up, we ask that you try your best to observe the social distancing guidelines. And we will all together. The body of Christ. Amen.
Please be seated. Let us pray. In company with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Good morning, everyone. I uh, just want to give the I want to take this opportunity to invite those of you who are devotees to the Divine Mercy, but it is open for everyone to join us for this first Friday devotion. We will have an, uh, an outdoor adoration of the Blessed Sacrament this coming first Friday from 6 to 7 p.m. Uh, we'll have the praying of the, the Divine Mercy devotion as well as we conclude it with uh, benediction. So it's an opportunity once again for us to come together for the, Eucharist, for the Holy Eucharist. So if you can join us for an hour this coming Friday. And the most important thing that I'd like to share with you this morning, and I know it's early in the morning, but uh, just to let you know that financially we are struggling. And after the fiscal year, we're about $300,000 plus in the hole. So how do we proceed with this? So I am just letting you know that I will have a meeting with uh, emergency, emergency with, meeting with uh, finance council and take their advice and counsel so we can proceed with best thing we know how, uh, with their wisdom that we can continue to offer services and ministries here without um, being uh, put more and more into the home. So my request is, having known that, is it possible that maybe if you're not uh, online giving, to think about it? And for those of you already using the online giving, I'm really appreciative of your uh, thoughtfulness and, and caring to continue to support us. And those are the, the ones that really sustained us during this pandemic time. So I just want to encourage you to, to please think about it. And um, I know that uh, we want to continue uh, our services available to everyone, especially those most in need. So I just want to let you know that. And even from day one, July 1st, we started with the whole, so we're <laughs> going deeper. So just want to make sure that we, uh, as stewards of your gifts and donations that we will make use of them in the best way possible. All right. So thank you very much for your listening.
The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thank you, Father Lewis, and thank you everyone for coming. This section will go first, and then the one on the right will wait until this is clear. And for those of you who are willing to assist us to put everything back into the church, you are more than welcome to help. Thank you very much for your consideration.